episode eight of No Mass of the Cosmos. A oh man, it always cracks me when I always have to not always say what I'm about to say. An actual play series of uh, Traveler. Ha ha. Books. I almost did the the funny thing of just Books. chucking it off the screen. But then I'm like, I'll probably need this. Yeah, we are joined by by Josh and Nate and Knight and ninety seven, and uh, we are very quickly coming to the end of uh, of our little series. Um, it's a uh, it's definitely heating up, and so I did have a fun question, but I couldn't, but I couldn't remember it. Uh -oh. So yeah, so I guess my fun. Uh, Story. I, I guess I have a fun story because uh, this weekend we took my niece to the Franklin Institute. Uh, more of a, a Philly thing if people are around here. Um, apparently there was like the Disney 100 mm. like thing. Um, yeah. And so so that was fun. Um, she was a little bit too young for it because it was much more of like the history of Disney and like how they make animation like her favorite thing i think is when they were watching like one of the songs and you could press a button on a tablet and it would change the language of the of the song and so like she got a kick out of it when uh i told her to hit the tie button um <laughs> she she wouldn't let me listen to it so i don't know what anything sounded like um uh, so um but uh but yeah we were having a grand old time there um but i it was one of these things that i was very confused on and it was a group of of people that were a lot of them were way older than i am some people that were probably pretty much my age and older they had this like compulsion to take pictures of every single thing and i'm like why <laughs> Because you gotta have memories. People, that's why you look. Yeah, that I'm pretty sure Josh is one of those people. I, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'm not sure if it's for Josh's job or uh, that he actually just likes taking pictures. <laughs> no, people. People for some reason think that like, I, I think it's the um, the people who grew up with the uh, Kodak cameras that you had to like spin the wheel and then take a picture mm -hmm. and hope that it came out right um they they have fomo and so they need the picture or it didn't yep. happen uh, and then they realize that those pictures get deleted off their phone when their phone dies because they didn't update it back them up or anything yeah because <laughs> they weren't using google drive or anything else to keep their pictures yeah or like well, i can understand yeah i can understand not keeping picture on google drive anymore <laughs> They but, um, uh, they cost you, Miller. They cost you money. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird phenomenon. It's it's like the people who just take pictures of all the food they eat, just on a normal basis. Or, or like people who record themselves them making picture, food, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, who would do that? Right, that like, seems really weird. Some uh, socially deprived person. <laughs> uh... <laughs> High five, Josh. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just a little day. No, I'm just kidding. Like, I don't know. I guess the like taking pictures of food stuff, like uh, stuff that you're not making, but like uh, like going out to restaurants. Because like one of my friends, like she, that's literally how she got her job was just <laughs> taking pictures of food and like hyping it up, and then it's just went into oh whoa. Goodness. Someone's holding an empty popcorn <laughs> ball, and Nate is blinding his camera. <laughs> You taking a picture for the gram? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, so... wait, wait. I got to oh, get in on this. I'm going to double it. <laughs> now we're going to ASMR. Oh, I held the camera upside down. Uh... Oh. Look at, oh. Look at that cute. And it still turns thing. on? Yeah, yeah. This is what I film a lot of my my videos on. 
this is the camera that came from Japan, even though I canceled the order. Because <laughs> uh, the G7X, when I ordered it, I think they weren't making it or anything. And I'm like, oh, I'll just use, I'll get a GoPro instead. And everything still went through. So now I have this camera and I use it way more than I use my GoPro. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it was just one of those things. I'm like, this is interesting. Like, uh, I don't know. I guess, like, I am I can understand if people are taking pictures, if it's going to be, like, shared on, like, a social media thing or stuff like that. But it was, like, these people were definitely, like, like two steps. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Just yeah. just look at the dang thing. Like, they, yeah, those people are they would much. just, it, they would just take the picture and, like, my niece, like, was... They had, like, a little display of um, the glass slipper from the What's-Her-Face. I forgot. Um, Cinderedna. Cinderedna? Cinderfella. <laughs> George <laughs> Lucas. Um, Cinderdwella. <laughs> uh, Brandy. He yeah. starring Brandy. So, but, yeah, so, like, my niece wanted to go over and look at it, and, like, the people are, like, trying to get the perfect shot, and I'm like, you're taking pictures of a transparent object. <laughs> anyway, well, the, the let's ones, talk about something that we all... The, the ones that amuse me... Foot in. The, the ones that amuse me the most are the ones that are trying to take pictures on dark rides with mm, their flash. Yep. Not understanding that their pictures that they're going to get using their flash that way are not going to be what they want. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You're not going to get anything you want taking a picture on a dark ride with the flash. <laughs> you're I, you'll see far more than this. you want this will be the the picture. Ooh, look at that i'm in a portal yeah, <laughs> with, i was uh, thinking the same thing with a phone stand right in front of your face <laughs> that was funny i didn't realize that of... was gonna cause there to be a circle in the background mm-hmm. i'm gonna have to try that <laughs> one of these days and see what i can come up with it reminds me of um there was like a trend it was really big into bodybuilders and then it went very lewd and then died but it was uh pretty much they would have a ring light and they would like pretty much shut off all the lights and then like show off their like the outline of their muscles as like showing the thing and i was like that's really cool and then i was watching one and like oh well i i'm not watching this anymore (laughs) it's like (laughs) Surprise! Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know what? We can talk about something that we maybe most of us can get into. So let's talk about Baldur Gates three, guys. We're we're not gonna do Traveler. I just want to talk about Baldur Gates three. Um, oh, the BG three interim episode. First. What? The BG three interim episode. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how we're gonna make sure we get to ten episodes. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I'm very much like, hey, if it if it ends if it ends early and tells a good story, I'm good with that. Very much like the Blaze in the Dark thing. But no, I'm not gonna get into I'm not gonna get into Baldur's Gate three. Um, because that's what a lot of conversation on my stream and Discord right now are all about. In short, uh, I made probably a five E build that I would actually want to play as that I call the Angry Bear. Ooh. Oh, I was but, re- is this with the owl bear? It it is uh pretty much you take to set it up, you get to level two druid, takes uh circle of the moon, yep. and then get one level in barbarian, so you can get rage. And on pen and paper, you can rage and wild shape at the same time. You and can. when at level two you can get uh bear. So you can be a raging polar bear. And uh, the problem is, at least I haven't seen it, how to do it. But it's like, you can't, like, they're both set as bonus actions in the video game. Which kind of does, it it takes too long to set up. Which, in the game, in pen and paper, you can, like, wild shape as a bonus or a standard action. Hmm. And so... It's uh, it's time to start emailing the game. 
Makes it really like, well, this is actually supposed to be this way, and so you guys gotta change that for me. Um, well, actually. Is, <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, as fun as this is, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna. Like, if I can't do that, it's like it ruins the whole, like, fun of doing that. But then I found out, like, you get this guy, you give him a hundred bucks, and you can just redo your whole character. So, it's like. Like, in-game currency, not, like, real money. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the pause, I'm like, let's let's clarify that. 100 gold. Gotcha. So, I'm it's like... like what I'm... in the world is happening right now? <laughs> well, you have to give him 100 that. pounds of real gold, and he'll do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's well, new, everyone, new all form the of microtransactions. Studios, well, that's the thing. The, the A lot of AAA studios are getting mad that there, there's no, like... They're like they're raising the standards of RPG, and it's like, no, they just <laughs> made a game, and you guys can't compete. <laughs> so, but anyway, <laughs> hey, y'all ready for some traveler? We're not here to talk about Five V, um, but uh, yeah. So, oh, I got all the music set up, and then I didn't put in like the fun little music that we do for like a quick recap. I think it's this one. It's called Galaxy News Elevator Escape. Yeah, okay, everyone's here and stuff. I'm like, I had to quick do a quick look at look see doodle. Just look at me. You'll see if I'm here music or not. Oh yeah, no, I saw <laughs> the corner of my eye. Everyone started like bobbing their head or <laughs> doing a little dance. I wish I, oh man, if I thought ahead, I would like play this and just do like a um. <laughs> Welcome to Galaxy News. <laughs> just like a, a fake news section. You still can. But uh, yeah, but I ain't getting up and I'm not changing now. Uh, so anyway, last episode, there was a ton of stuff that happened. Um, pretty much, it's really funny looking at my notes because, let's see, I got one, two, three. There's like eight lines here that just start off with Gerudo. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like Gerudo and Ilse, Gerudo and Ilse, Gerudo and Ilse, and then like off in the corner, O'Heal. <laughs> so, um, but yes, in short, um, the crew finds their target. They go and uh, they get into the X suite uh, or X suit, depending on how you want to pronounce it. X suit. Yeah. Um, but uh, pretty much. We find out that Elsie and Gil have a little bit of a past, and Gil is not too happy about that. To where, um, through some sort of shenanigans and a well-rolled die, and me not fully understanding combat rules of Traveler, um, Elsie uh, pretty much almost kills Gil, and Gerudo finishes the job. In that point, they quickly take care of a few other people, and uh, they go to take the package dust when this kid that looked all meek and mild all of a sudden has an attitude problem and s just doesn't stop talking uh and has a gun now learn so from anyway, timmy <laughs> um yes in the many annals of uh, <laughs> space and time timmy is still a legend uh which it brings pretty much uh O'Heal kind of gets like a meeting where it just so happens to conveniently work out that when the lockdown happened, a bunch of important people were on the ring, rather in the spire, and uh, he meets with Jade, and Jade pretty much informs him that the more spire is actually run by AI, and that's why everything is kind of getting shut down, and we're going to have to find a different way to get your, your team out. Um, and from there, he... Uh, Let's see. I lost it. Uh, they get. And he meets with um, Barrett, and uh, they bring Barrett and Dash on, and uh, they pretty much are getting in touch with medical and trying to figure out how to get these guys off the ship, because now they have told. Uh, now he'll mention pretty much told them uh about how they're getting dust and took care of gill and they are 
from my notes, <laughs> seem like they're willing to work with him a little bit. Uh, all while hiding uh, Bancroft in the ship and not letting anybody know that she's on there. All this is going on while uh, O'Eal's having uh, business meetings. Uh, Gerudo and Elsie are pretty much um, sneaking around, uh, fake hold up uh, medical staff. Uh, Ilse finally uh, hits a breaking point and uh, just almost murders a guy and blows up a smoke grenade. Uh, and uh, are about to go down an elevator as 30Z charges through the smoke and watches them go down the tube. And that is where we ended the se season, the session. And I think we gotta switch this music because this music is way too happy. As I hope this was the same music, it is. This is a good, like, space uh, stress music, and I wish I could have uh, stretched out the banter and uh, the and everything a little bit longer because I'm excited and not not looking forward to playing. <laughs> <it's just> like, <laughs> there's a podcast I listen to where the guys. Um, I think almost every episode he's like, I want us to stretch everything out so we can avoid playing because I'm not ready. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and I, I always, I was like, that's funny. And then it's like, I run almost, I run almost as many games as he does now. And I'm like, I can, I can, I can understand that. <laughs> It'd just be easier to just talk about everything else for two hours, but we're not here to do that. Or Thank are you. we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> record scratch we're actually here to talk about the hit ps2 game nba street volume 2 how did you know oh, it was back there somewhere <laughs> Let's I don't know where go. Yeah, I can't find he's it. on fire oh, there it is it's in the middle of everything i don't know the sports street series was great until they made the third of every one of them True. and nfl street 2 one and two amazing best sports games any poop so um i realized i did not write down the color oh yes i did wait yeah you went down to the you went down the orange tube the orange dwarf sector so um ilsi and gerudo you guys are heading down the tube uh with child in tow as like you just see all the different uh like kind of the different numbers going by. I, I'm just assuming you guys just hit a random button, or was there uh, a floor that you were specific, excuse me, specifically going to? You're muted. I knew that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think I was gonna go to like the lowest floor to let me go to. All right. Um, I will say, just as a reminder, that um, O'Heal did give a suggestion for a place. Um, oh, no, that's right. We were supposed to go to the the restaurant. Yeah, uh, yeah. what about meat stacks? 37 yeah. and a half. Is it 37? Yeah, I, th I, I think so. 30-something and a half? It was either 37 or 32nd. 32nd and a half. I... <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's interesting because like maybe you just hit like a button just to get the elevator going down, and then maybe that that came across your mind, and then like you're just scanning, and then you see like thirty two point five. <laughs> There's like no other floor that's like a point five or anything. Um, so you you press that button, and uh, and the kids like the kids just like, oh no, not here. And then a couple minutes later, it just like, poof, and uh, the doors slide open. Um, I feel like we need a different music, but I don't think I have the right <laughs> music for what would be Wubba Dubba's meat stack thing. Um, let's see. Um, let's, uh, what is this? <laughs> Suck on a meat stack. 
<laughs> this has got a whole lot more clownish. <laughs> Knight probably recognized this song. This but would anyway. be great for a different episode of something. Yeah. I do uh, not recognize right, this song, but it is hilarious. This is the... Okay. This is a song that was played in Sanity Lost that... Uh, chapter one, clowns are driving around, and this was a, a song that they were playing, blasting from their car as they were promoting a circus. What's this one? I know what we can do. Hold up. Let's go here. This is like more coffee, <laughs> coffee shop stuff. Um, what, let's, there we go. Yeah, this sounds. Be, this would be what well that is. Yeah. So like you open Eat up the speed star. Yeah. <laughs> so like the doors open up and there's just like, just like, <laughs> like fire, like little smoke explosions going down the hallway, and uh, I'm gonna need water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as like, you guys are walking down the hallway and you just see like. The screen pop up and it's like, oh yeah, it's me, Wubba Dubba, and are you here for your, your meat snacks, my friends? Quick, get in, claim a table, otherwise you'll have to fight for your life. And uh, and it's just like, he's like, oh yeah, before it like blips out, and then it's like uh, a very like deadpan, like young girl's just like, welcome to Wubba Dubba's meat snacks. Can we get you a table? Yes, table would be great. <sighs> okay, follow me. And it's just like, as you're going through, there's just like tables that are on like fire. There's tables that are like, it's got like neon, like orange, like lights, like uh, lights that look like liquid, like pulsing through the floor. And um, there's just like, like belts like all hung around like the thing like you know how some establishments will have like pictures of famous people this is all like very large and um like brightly like dazzling looking belts that are all just saying best meat stack in the galaxy <laughs> and uh just like all these awards but like um <laughs> there's like a Maybe she sees you looking at him and is like, yeah, he won those in, like, a food thing, but he said that trophies were gaudy, so he melted them down into these trophy belts and <laughs> post them all over the wall. <laughs> so if you guys want to take a picture with them, it's, yeah, I can understand. Just just make sure you tag us. Wubba Dubba at the Moore Spire. Yeah. And Elsie and pulls out her, like, one column and it's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bruno's we just got... gonna look at her go. We just get to the table, please. She's like getting down next to the little kid and just like pull out our pistols. No, <laughs> and he's like, and he does. He's like, yeah. Bruno <laughs> will slap the crap out of you if you pull out a no, pistol. No, we're not pulling out. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, here, let me show you your table, and like she kind of leads you through. Uh, kind of this main eating area, and she's like, "All right, well, there's two options. There's you can hit the button where you can get the the meat of the day, or you can go over to the buffet and you can uh, choose pretty much any general uh, meat thing that we have there. We pretty much have all options of meat that we form into a stick." <laughs> This place sounds amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's all we, it's all sticks of meat. <laughs> yes. No, no guts see, of meat, just sticks of meat. Yeah, it's <laughs> like... You know what, here, roll... Uh, now I remember the other thing I was trying to open up. If you guys want to... As I open up the character sheet thing... Um, if you want to... Let's see... If you want to do a society streetwise, let's see if you can know if you heard how the meat sticks are made. You can do that. Uh, so that's uh, 
Ah, oh, that turns out to be a seven. Right. For me. <laughs> Did you roll three? I have a plus three to my street rise, and a minus one to my society. So I ended up rolling a six total. With a plus three to my street rise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's like, Yeah, well, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Or don't. My son uh, with a minus two. <laughs> and so, she's like, Oh, yeah, the. By the way, um, if you guys want to know, the, the meat of the day is. Oh, what is, and she like kind of starts flipping through like a notepad and just like flamingo. All right, flamingo stack. So <laughs> I just realized flamingo is my niece's favorite animal. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't shock me. Doesn't. Shock and now me it's a all. snack. Yeah. Well, I also tell snack her snack. that she was Pavloved into liking it, but she doesn't understand that reference because she's three. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so she's like, yep, yeah, um, but if there's no more questions, I, I will head out. And, and we'll see, knowing that we're, like, also trying to get extra food for the road goes, um, is there a takeout option? Uh, yeah, I can get a box. Can can we get three boxes? <sighs> okay. And she just trudges away, just like as she pulls out like a like the equivalent of a smartphone and just starts looking at uh I don't know whatever equivalent of spacegram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's on space exactly. dock. Like, yeah, I was like, I'm like, do I? That literally popped up, and I was like, do I want to say space dock? I'm like, it's got to be a better thing. It's like, uh, she's she's on like the spire social media. Yep, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, like over there, it's just like, huh, three dummies just came in for meat sticks, lols. <laughs> so, <laughs> um. But yes, uh, pretty much, uh, just once again, a reminder for you guys, uh, uh, Barrett and I believe Jade, and even, I don't remember who mentioned it, it was either Barrett, Jade, or Dash that mentioned that, um, uh, as I scroll down, um, Emmy Rhodes, like mm -hmm. the engineers should be down there. Um, yeah, and we're we're arranging to get Emmy Rhodes to meet at Bubba, at uh, Wubba mm -hmm. Dash Dash chimed in about Wubba Dubba's. It was Barrett and Jade who suggested Rhodes, and Dash suggested the meeting place. Alright. So, well, you got here, and are you what would you guys like to do? Are you guys going to go hit the buffet? Are you guys going to take uh, a scan to see if you can... Because you have met Emmy. Uh, you met her when you first got on here. Uh, you also met... Uh, I think you met a few of the engineers. But anyway... Um, Ilse will be filling up three boxes of as much meat sticks, meat stacks as she can um, for the journey after. And we'll be grabbing like meat stacks and like just taking a, a bite out of them while she is doing that. Okay, so you're gonna go to the um whatever it's called. The, yeah, she's the buffet she's line. at the buffet and she's filling these boxes up and then she's gonna okay. try to like. Gerda's gonna settle. sit with the kid and um just sit there for a minute and. Then he's gonna say, uh, you, uh, you wanna talk about it? About what? Uh, whatever's going on in your life right now. 
Do you even know what you are trying to smuggle off here? No. And like he kind of holds his face, like kind of just like stress comes through. He's like, so you don't know what dust actually stands for? No. I'm dust. Nice to meet you. I'm Guru. It's it's an acronym. It's a. Uh, and like he gets like he looks around and he's like I shouldn't be telling you this, but, but okay. And he just sits back down. <clears throat> and <laughs> and uh, we'll go over to LC. Uh, so yeah, you are over in um, the in the the buffet line, and like you see like chicken. Pig, cow, koala, meatloaf, uh, and like just all these different like styles of, of meats that are out there. There's even like, um, shoot, I forgot where the creature page is on here. <laughs> yeah, but she's she's like filling up each box with as much meat as she can, and she's specifically like knows like Gerudo and O'Heel's like favorites and mm -hmm. like putting in extras of those and yep so there's sorry I found it there's also like Nibbins as well which is like a little uh, they're like a, they look like a an otter with butterfly wings pretty much and like big ears and there's definitely gazals and uh, and then there's like a they're like rare, fine Carthus meat sticks, which uh, kind of look like a demigorgon. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> For anybody that has the um, Traveler book, it's on page eighty-six. <laughs> um, it looks like a demigorgon that isn't a flower head. <laughs> Closed its mouth. Really funny. Um, and so as she like finishes filling up the boxes. She, at this point, has, like, eaten enough, like, protein to, like, really feel like her... She's fully back to, like, her senses from all the ordeal of everything that just happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And she starts to scan the room to see if she can recognize Emmy anywhere in the building. Hey, uh, And to give see if there's, like, any threats or anything, too. Hey, give a recon roll. <laughs> Minus two to a roll. And then make sure you add a characteristic. Yep. Oh, that was with a characteristic on it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that is a one. Total. Yeah. <laughs> now you you don't spot anything. Like you actually like you don't see Emmy, but like you actually see Wubba Dubba walking out, and he's just like, "Hey, brother. Hey, sister." And just like he's just like, "Try the flamingo. It's amazing." Like he's just kind of he definitely like grabs your attention as like this uh, if he was on the anagram he'd be an 8-8 eight, eight, which is impossible <laughs> he would just uh, be it, the number 7 personified hey well, I think, oh yeah I guess he'd be an 8 with a 7 wing because the 8s are the ones that control like the the room and stuff and the 7s are the go-getters I think Seven, sevens are able. the people dancing on the table, and the eights are the people saying, "Hey, you should really dance on that table." Mm -hmm. He's all. <laughs> he's all <laughs> the enneagrams. He's he's the perfect specimen. He glows now. <laughs> but yeah, he he's like achieved transcendence. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he's he's out there just like making, uh, like talking with like the other guests there and he's just like Debbie stop being such a downer and be happy <laughs> and he's like yeah <laughs> I'm just like I love that kid it's my cousin <laughs> or no not cousin it's, like, it's my my niece's nephew's third removed cousin whatever <laughs> summer job <laughs> and just like he, he just like jumps off a table and like elbow drops a like a huge like line of of people just sitting on like one of the tables that are on fire as like fire explodes around. And he's like, yeah, I love it. 
Um, but yeah, he's there, and like for some reason he's just fully distracting you. Um, but uh, as he's like that, in her head, I've never seen a Greek god like this before. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Elsie's just like um, Alistair who? Elsie's <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like, man, I need some more stories for uh, <laughs> confession time on the ship. <laughs> oh, don't don't you worry. We'll Forget us, the bond baby. <laughs> some meat stacks later. It's like, oh man, good thing there's uh. <laughs> Good thing there's uh, whatever it's called, um, the alcohol stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't even realize she's just like chewing on like alcohol, like macerated. <laughs> it's dehydrated <meat>. lager. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just, yeah, it's just just it's called a drunken meat stick. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll uh. uh write these notes down as I'm getting them. So yeah, you you don't spot anything. Rudo tells the kid to shut up. Um, and I think at this point, I feel like we need to... Uh, we'll go back. I th this is going to be like jarring um, sound-wise because we're going to be flipping to between two different scenes and I don't think all the scenes will have the same music. So, we're back with Oheel um, on the ship. Oh, he really um, loves the soundtrack for the ship. It's he has it played on on repeat constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, in the heels mind, he's like, whenever there's tense situations, I need the tense soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you, um, what are you, what do you want to do now? Uh, so I guess I'd be kind of listening to their progress and. Hearing that they made it to Wabdabas and tried to find out, you know, working with uh, Jade and Barrett to figure out where where uh, Emmy is and try to get Emmy in contact or get in contact with Emmy and get get the two groups to or get Emmy in contact with the uh, the group we're trying to get out of the station. So, uh, so I'll pass on to. To Barrett and uh, Jade, that hey, it sounds like they're it sounds like Elsie and uh, Gerudo made it to to Wubba Dubba's. So uh, sound like their departure from the main floor is a little bit spicy. So I think we need to see if we if if possible, we need to get them out of there quick. Yes, understandable. And he's like, I just got off the the call with. Uh, with Rhodes, and they should be heading there soon. Hopefully, security does not get there first. And, uh, like, Jade hears, like, you guys are all, I assume, are still talking in, like, the front of the ship. And, uh, she kind of mentions, like, um, uh, scrolling down, Neolai might, uh, Neolai might be able to buy some time. And, uh, and, like, they kind of go back and forth a little bit, like, embarrassed, just like, if he hasn't already been disposed, you know how, how the, the Doltov system gets. If, uh, if it deems it, it's gonna send its right hand out. And they kind of get quiet for a little bit. Oh, um, uh, what is it, what is its right hand? It is, uh, it's a bit confusing, uh, to be honest. It's, uh, and Dash speaks up. Oh, everybody knows about that. It's, uh, the robot. Oh, and I think I met the, just... I think I met this robot. Does it run yeah. around with, uh, Neolai, Neolai all the time? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes by myself. Hold on. It's not a hair. <laughs> I had to look over my notes and just make sure. Um, but, uh... So it, uh, it's known as 30Z? Is that the... Oh, yeah, that's the one. Brian oh, Silver. interesting. Ne Neil, I, uh, 
you know, I kind of introduced it as like a, a trainee partner. Nah, nah. I, they just say that because they get weirded out, you know? It's like, oh man, AI taking everyone's jobs. Did I hear that? Uh, so... So how do we get in touch with Neilai? See if he's available to, uh... Do something to, uh, help us out here. And, uh... And Jade's like, well, we could just call, and then it's like, her comm unit, like, feedback, like, has feedback, and she's like, and, like, actually all, Barrett and Jade, like, they just, like, kind of, like, wince as you can hear, like, this, like, a and it's like, I was afraid of that. It seems that the Dolokhov system has shut us off, so, we, we don't have contact with the inside unless... Well, how about you? Um, Garu not Garudo, you're not Garudo. How about you, O'Hill? Are you able to still contact your crew inside? Um, so I'll, uh, trigger my comment like, uh, hey, uh, Garudo, uh, Ilse, are, can you hear me? And, and, yeah, you guys can. Yes. And Ilse's just uh, like, yeah? Uh, so, um, well, Emmy's on her way, but, uh, we've got a, we got a bit of a more situation developing here. Uh, we have no comms to the station from the ring, besides what we've got right here. Excellent. So, so be aware, stay, stay low, wait till Emmy gets there, and, uh, hopefully she can get there before security. And I'll let uh, Barrett and Jade know that um, I can. S I'm still in touch with uh, with the rest of my crew. And and Elsie just sarcastically snipes back that stay, uh, like did you say stay quiet, like stay stay undercover or whatever? And she's just like, yep. It luckily we didn't just blow a man's head off and steal a very valuable person and. Then no, we did not get chased by security throughout the ship. It wasn't us. Well, Elsie, El you don't know don't that know Dust is that. is the child. Well, no, we know that Dust is like the briefcase. Okay, yeah, I was just making sure that you weren't saying like. Oh no, you, no, no! no. <laughs> I, I yeah. wasn't talking. I was just saying Elsie yeah. knows I, we have the thing. Yes, I was just the way it came off. I was like, Elsie uh, doesn't know that Dust is kid. So, <laughs> we just um, we just know that people want the kid, and that yes. we stole it and blew a man's head, or at least the package. And, yeah, and ran away. I know that the kid is dust. I just don't know what dust is. <laughs> <laughs> you you stopped him from talking. You just, dust is you me. A Do you want to know more? Nah. Gerudo. <laughs> Gerudo just played Gerudo to a T, and I love it. I hate it from a knowledge knowing standpoint, right? but I love it from a Gerudo standpoint. Um, I think Gerudo's going to take a second to kind of look around and see, uh, just kind of see what he's seeing, kind of see what the, what's around them. All right. Well, we'll we'll get back to you in one one second because uh, we're still we're still oh, in yeah. the cosmic bluff. Yep, no problem. Um, so I can still talk to them. I I don't know that how they're going to get in touch with Neola Neolai to to do anything on that front, or if they, if Neil, I would even trust them, but I don't know, maybe they still have some ability to talk to other parts of the station? Um, sorry, uh, you were asking if they had a ways to get into the, like, contact parts of the station? Well, yeah, it's like, this would be kind of like conversation back to Barrett and Jade. Like, I, I don't mm. know if they... They might be able to talk to other parts of the station, but I don't know if Neil I would trust them even if they could get in touch with them without some other introduction. Yes. Yes, it's, um... I don't know if we... If we're able to, I guess, hotwire our way in 
that might be an option. But... What's your electronics skill? Do you have... Um, I do not have electronics at this point. That's actually what I'm working on my study on. <laughs> no yeah, problem. The, the electronics people are both sitting in Wobba Dubba's. Because Elsie mm -hmm. has a zero. So she's trained, but not, like, skilled. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So... Well, I, um, O'Heal would know that. Um, and so, um, I mean, I guess my concern is it, that, you know, if we're trying to hack into the system that way, if we're trying to hotwire our way in, then we're potentially tipping off the system even more to where they're at. Yes, that's true, but. This is the difficult part. It's, um... The only other thing I'd think of is if we can go to one of the security posts and see if they have a working comm unit, but the problem is the Dolotov system will know when we get there. But they won't know about you pointing to Ohiel. It's like... If... If you're able to and willing to to make that call, we can. And like Barrett's like, I can write you a letter. <laughs> trying I mean, to I get you inside. I did talk to Neilai as well, so at least it wouldn't be a completely blind introduction at that point. Yes, but if he's not on this side, if he's on the inside, it's. Do you think you can convince security, or would you like... We could give you a pass. The, the thing is, we would... As soon as we would go up there, because we're already cut off, would we get... The Dolotov system would know. But you were not part of the system, so it wouldn't know. Well, okay, so where is this security spot that they're talking about going to? Is this something that's, like, it's, on the ring it's relatively much, close, or...? Yeah, so, like, you... Uh, pretty much, like, almost where every tube is to go, like, forward, there's, like, a, a post nearby. And they're pretty much, uh, without, like, fully RP, and they could explain, it's like, if you go there, the security network has to be on their own kind of network, um, for, for moments like this. So, it would be the best chance of getting a hold of, of Neolai. You just need to convince the security to get you in contact with Neolai. Yeah, so I definitely want something from either Barrett or Jade, or potentially, I mean, ideally both, maybe, but uh, something that from them to show to the security, you know, basically convince the security person to come away from any potential cameras and show, so that Dolotov can't see what I'm doing. But um, my concern is I don't want to be too far from the ship either, so is this something that's like within a couple minutes from the ship sort of place? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's... Okay. It's, um... Um... Sorry. Uh... That... In short, it's like... It's within... I'm trying to remember how long of a walk it was for you guys, because this was, like, literally episode two or three. But, um, you would be within, like, a... a well, no, you can also borrow the cart to get closer. Like, the Dash would be willing to, to drive you, like, close enough so that way it didn't look weird. Uh, and so that way it's, like, you can get there in, like, a couple minutes, and then it's, like, a two-minute walk there. He's willing to do that for you. All right, so I'll have. Uh, so, um, so if you guys can write a quick note so that I can get the both convince the security and something that maybe I can tell Neilai that would can that would kind of let him know that I'm working with you two, then and make it easier to convince him to do whatever he can to help out. It would be 
that would be fantastic. Um, I'm, my crew probably can do something with computers. I'm just on the station. I'm just concerned that doing too much is potentially just going to tip off the system that they're, that they're there and lead to a quicker security response than we want. Yes, that totally makes sense. It's, um, <clears throat> honestly, engineering might be able to turn our comms back on with, once they get in touch with roads. But until then, um, yeah, there's only so much we can do from here without communications. But with Neolai, if we get ne in contact with Neolai, that, that should work. And uh, Barrett's like, let, and like he kind of just sits down and starts, starts writing. Uh, thing and, and Jade's like kind of gives you kind of directions uh, of like how to get there and she's like yeah I don't know who is in the actual section of who's in that security thing but uh, in that security post but uh, with the letter and say that you got to talk to Neoli they should let you through um. all right and do, would there be any way any kind of com uh, channel that Elsie and Gerudo could potentially get in touch with Emion. Um, not with not without a, not with the communication cut off. So it's like it's just they're gonna have to meet in person. Well, I was more trying to get them a way of getting together quicker or finding out, keeping well, track they, of what they met. Yeah, so it's yeah, it, it pretty much. Uh, Emmy might be able to do something, but they, they have to pretty much meet first. Yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm trying to get them to... A tool to get together easier. Um, okay, yeah. so... Well, yeah, being cut off, like, there's... You're limited to what, what they can do, so... Yeah, I wasn't sure if there's some, like, frequency that we could use. Sort of like what I had with Dash. Um, okay, so I'll take the, uh, the letter and head off with Dash to the security post and let the uh like yeah hey guys um working on getting in touch with security as well to to see what i can do with that side uh emmy's on their way so keep an eye out and get in touch as soon as you see her And we're back in Wubba Dubba's as uh, Elsie's sitting down at the table, still enamored by um, Wubba, Wubba Dubba's antics um, and yeah, eating uh, what looks like uh, pretty much alligator, an alligator meat stick, uh, which is really rare because... Um, they almost went extinct in the Great War of uh, of 8032. I don't know the years of the Traveler. I'm just making up random numbers because <laughs> I thought it'd be funny. Um, but anyway... Um, now it's canon. <laughs> in the deep pain canon of Traveler. <laughs> I get involved with, with tabletop RPGs and ruin all their canons. Um, <laughs> and all their lore. There's probably like an article somewhere because they have like 8,000 books out. Actually, alligators became sentient and took over Mars. Anyway, Gerudo, you wanted now to. Now they do did. A... <laughs> I want to play a sentient alligator. I'll work. Yeah, on basically it. just the. I guess it'd be a recon check. Yep. So, uh, well, Ilsi has uh, the comm from the security guard. Com. Uh, there we of go. Neolai. No, not I... Neolai. She has the security guard's comm that we stole from. I have his badge and his comm. Oh. Roll to ten. I don't think that was communicated to, to Ohil. <laughs> so, no, Ohil does not. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you rolled a ten. Um, I'll get to that in a... I'll let you know. There's something I want... Just to roll, I'll see the roll, which, um, I guess, 
I'm trying to see it. I guess it technically would be recon again, but I'm trying to see. Uh, actually, if you if you have tactics, one of the tact. Uh, yeah, she has, she has she has two to tactics. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to roll tactics, uh, to as you're kind of listening over uh, the security stuff to see if you can get any information. Um, should I roll? my social on that or should i roll my intellect on that i think i think intellect okay, intellect or education since that was well, like we're gonna roll our, our intellect because our education is horrible um yep so roll that so and i'll ask you for the number in a second yep so um yeah so Greta, you rolled a 10 right yep so you uh as well the dubba like elbow drops like another like table of a fire spark shoot out and then you see Roads kind of like coming in, just like talking with the um, pretty much talking with the the hostess and she, the, the host, and she's just like, No, I can't put there's nobody waiting for other people. And she's like, I'm here to meet. I don't remember what Emmy's voice was, but she's like, I'm here to meet somebody, and you're gonna let me know if they've been here nobody has said that they're here that they're waiting for you and i can't let you in unless you have a table if you want a table i can bring you to she's like oh my goodness i'm um yeah so like you see all that going yeah i i think i'm gonna i'm just gonna tap uh ilsi and go uh Ilsi dust dust Ilsi I'm burrito be right back and I'm gonna walk off alright <laughs> yep. and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to to Emmy and just be like hey she's with us follow me um do you know that's going to cost extra for late arrivals that are unplanned put it on her tab I'm gonna gesture of my thumb at uh Ilsi Elsie, you just like spot them all looking at you. And she like holds up. She like holds up her comm thing and, be, and like just gives a thumbs up. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. yeah. And she's and so Rose's like, oh, well, at least you guys chose a place of class. Um, as she makes her way over. Uh, so Elsie, uh, well, I'll give you the option since you're alone with with what uh, Gruta just said with Dust. Um, if you want to keep listening to the comms or do you want to talk to Child? Um, at this point, Ilsi will be flabbergasted because Gerudo just introduced the Child as Dust. And what How about the, what did you roll on I, your I rolled your an tactics? 8. Okay. So, yeah, you... What did I pick up you, before, before yes. this? Yeah, so, like, pretty much, like, you hear it's just, like, this, like, robotic voice, like, come over the, the comms. It's just, like, we have searched the third and fourth floor, moving down systematically, sending crew down to the middle unit. Like, it's pretty much they're systematically searching the floors until they, they find you. Because uh, they, there's no, like, uh, at least from what you can... Yeah. figure out there's no like way for them to find out where you got off um and so yeah so maybe you hear that and that's when you see like they they're all looking at you you get the thumbs up and you have like a second or two if you want to talk to the kid yeah and and so Elsie's just like so your dust yes But no one seems interested in that. Not the, not the briefcase, but you. Uh, the briefcase is just, um, a red herring, a distraction. It seems like it worked pretty well. But let's just say I need to get off this place, and it seems like you are the ones to do it. That's what we're here for. Excellent. And then it's like at that point, uh, Gerudo comes back with Rhodes. 
It's like Ilse's just kind of like in a pregnant pause, just like trying to grasp that like the boy's dust. Mm -hmm. And it's not like clicking in her head. She's like, but it's not the... So like as they come up, she's just like verbally saying, but it's not the briefcase? And like he, like he looks you in the eyes and it's just like, shh. Like, <laughs> kind of just like, stop. As like... A new, uh, a new, uh, contender has entered the arena. Um. Um. I think as Garuda walks up and as he hears the last bit, he's just gonna, like, give Ilse a hearty slap on the back and go, Ilse, you remember Emmy? Oh, hey. right, the crazy one who's not so crazy. <laughs> like, cocks are happening, like, excuse me? Well, you told us that the AI was controlling the whole ship and we didn't believe you, but now we do because the AI is controlling the whole ship. Sorry about I, the vegetarian stuff. I think you're talking about um, Lauren? She was the one that was talking about that story? She... Oh, Emmy came up to take Lauren Emmy's... away. Yes. Got you. Never mind. So don't don't mind the Josh that doesn't understand. That that backstory. actually makes sense in character, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> it really does. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. That's canon. Uh, Ilse's confusing. Oh, oh, you're the one who saved us from the crazy person. Got you. Okay. Who Look. wasn't really crazy because she was right. Ilse, Duff said, Emmy, can you get us out? So it sounds like you know the secret. Don't tell Lauren. We're trying to tell her not... The less people know that the whole ship is run by AI, it, the better. Um, but anyway, it seems like you guys are a hot spot as she, like, looks... I don't know. I, let's yes, see, just, the uh, table is on fire. It's warm. We're in a hot spot. Uh, she looks over at the actually the kid. But, like, just a quick um, description for her. Is that like she has like bronze hair, a little slightly heavier, like more muscle mass. Like I imagine her like uh, built like a dwarf. So that's uh, but yeah. So she's like, and it's like yes. And I know that you guys are making a stir. Is she like flips open like her, like uh, this like or this not on it's not on her wrist, but like opens up this like pocket like um kind of just display it's just like yep yeah. looks like we'll be fixing up your mess in in the x suite but um all right i got a i got contact with barrett shortly before they were cut off um you guys went off it sounds like yes please right, we need to get down to engineering we and we have a Pretty much, uh, we call it the poop and scoop. Pretty much, uh, we stick you y'all in um, a sealed container and shoot you out of the bottom of the ship. Uh, we do this to pretty much get rid of trash and in situations like you guys are to keep more spire clean. Because if the AI doesn't actually catch anybody, it can't make any um, alerts, and we don't have to pay insurance rates. Um, so we don't really care what you or this little child has to do. We just need everything to chill out. So, um, shall we, uh, shall we come? Uh, shall we go to engineering? Yeah, let's get rid of some space trash. All right. With us, with space trash. Yep, yep, no, I, I, I got it. <laughs> I'm the say we're a crappy bunch of people. I did not expect you to have a sense of humor. Anyway, let's go. And uh, she kind of stands up, and <laughs> as you guys kind of all get up, like, you see... Actually, everyone roll recon. Except for you, Knight. You're not there. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to play, too! <laughs> yeah, that's a five. I rolled an eight. Alright. Yeah, now you're... Elsa, you're still flabbergasted of learning who Dust, what Dust actually is. 
and, and that like uh, Emmy's not Lauren, and she's just she's a little confused because yeah. she's not that smart. And you're like, I thought I asked for four boxes from meat sticks, and <laughs> uh, so you're just all like confused and all that. But Gerudo, you see the elevator doors slide open, and Thirty Z is there coming in, and uh, is just like she hasn't spotted you yet. I keep saying she. It's not a she. It's a... They. <laughs> All they, right. Dave. It's 2020. Um, <laughs> they were they. Dude. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grab uh, Emmy and Ilse, and I'm gonna pull them down. We're gonna kind of duck down. I'm gonna tell the kid, duck, bot coming. Emmy now. Okay, and she she spots it to like 30 Z's, just like, well. uh... We can go through the kitchens, and uh, she says that, um, like, and she'll, like, hold up, like, kind of hold up her hand for a second, and, like, Wubba Dubba comes over, he's like, ooh, my favorite lady, what's up? And he's like, hey, um, we need an exit from, uh, the tin can, and he's like, looks over, sees 30Z, and just like, oh, don't worry, <laughs> and he just, like, follow me, and, uh, I'm gonna need... Is there stealth? Yeah, there is stealth. So I'm gonna need stealth ch checks from you guys. Uh, roll them, and we'll when we come back to you guys, we will find out how that goes. As we now go back to O'Heal, um, as you guys are uh, kind of wind up there, as Dash is like, "Hi, man. They're, they're pretty scared, but don't worry. They're, they're they're a bunch of little teddy bears underneath, like some of them way underneath, but." Uh, with that letter you got there, you should be fine. Ah, uh, alright, uh, and I'll, uh, take that and make my way to the security booth, the security post, and, uh, just kind of tap on the window and just say, like, uh, or kind of motion to, to one of the security people to, to come outside to talk. Yeah, and, like, there's a guy that's, like, on the comms, and he's just, like, holds up, like, one second, and, uh, there's just finishing up his work as he like kind of is typing away in the computer and like talking on the comms and um and uh yeah pretty much it's like a younger looking guy um kind of like olive olive colored skin like slicked black, black hair and he's just like uh kind of young looking and he's just like uh yeah and he comes in and he's like so uh what can I do you for uh hey I'm I'm hoping that you can uh, help me out here and I'll, I'll... I'll uh, show him the the uh, letter, try to make sure it's not visible to any potential cameras that might be in the area, and. Uh, Man, you can you can fold it and hand it over to him. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, so like, just take a look. Um, but I'm I'm hoping that you can put me in touch with uh, somebody in the uh, security department on the on the station. Um, are we? Uh, we had some conversation. We can't talk to them right now, and. Really need to get in touch with him. Like he, like confusion, like crosses his face. He's like, uh, just, just, uh, just look at, uh, and I just had to point to the paper. Just take, take a quick look, and it'll help. So like, he he opens it up and begins reading, and it's just like, and kind of his eyes go wide, and he's just like, come, come with me, uh, and brings into the office, and it's just like, so. This is like the flesh captain, like the the real one, not the not the creepy AI. Don't worry, the this is actually uh, security is actually cut off from the AI um, observation thing for for um, legal issues. Yeah, uh, this it's the uh, real captain. He's um, he's currently on the on my ship at the moment, and I'm working to get the rest of my crew back over here to uh, so we can. Uh, well, make a make our way away from the station here. Okay, okay. Um. Okay, look. I'm I'm just gonna need some. Inf I'm gonna need some information. Um. Okay, so he mentioned that you guys are getting in touch with Rhodes, and yeah, I I think my crew just got in touch with Rhodes, or they're just about. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure exactly where we're time wise, but. I think, I think they're just getting in touch with Rhodes, and 
or should be any time. Yeah, like you heard them like kind of having the conversation. Yeah, like, I, I'm just not sure how much time skewer we have here. Well, let's say as well. like as as you're saying that like thirty, they're like you hear like like kind of you you know that thirty Z is now down in the. Okay, so I, area, like I said, so. I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting the right time, right time frames. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything, so, so like, it took yeah, so a little time to write the letter, and like, so between him writing the letter and you getting over there, we'll say yeah, like, so, that's so they where just, you guys are at. yeah, so they just got in touch with Emmy, and it sounds like, uh, sounds like they got some trouble coming in there right now too. Um, I, you probably know 30Z has uh, apparently that uh, that little uh, hunk trash is showed up in there. Uh, yeah, no one likes that. That one uh, showed up and started making demands all of a sudden. It's like second in command for some reason. We, um, My voice changed, um, but don't pay attention to that. Um, <laughs> Happens to all of us. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think there's something in the food. Um, anyway, um, and then he's just like, so uh, yeah, we uh, we can go out and do that. Um, okay, the problem is if we can get in touch with the captain. Neil I is a good man. Wolf, uh, you know what I mean. He, he's a good guy, and uh, it's. Yeah, uh, I just yeah. If I can talk to him for a couple minutes, hopefully, and I don't know what I don't know if he's gonna be able to do anything to help, but uh, just covering as many bases as we can, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, so he, uh, he gets in con. He like he he's like, okay, let me try this, and like he he starts ringing, uh, bringing. He uh, hits a few buttons on there, and he's just like, uh, gotta look through, and make sure he doesn't actually have like an official title. Do 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 uh, do 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 do. There we go. So he's like, uh. A uh, squad leader, or I guess it wouldn't be squad leader. It'd be uh, Captain um, Captain Neilai. Captain Neilai, can you uh, can you uh, call back at your nearest convenience? Uh, we have some information we got to talk about on private channel. And like he, he repeats that, and uh, yeah, we didn't do luck, so odds or evens. Uh, evens. To three, so there's not uh, an instant reply back. Um, it's almost like uh, it goes from like five minutes, and like he, he calls out, uh, calls out again, and uh, it's almost like ten minutes, and then Neil is like, "Oh uh, yeah, um, what what do you need there, soldier, or not soldier? What do you need?" And uh, he's like, um, I got a, I got a, a person here that wants to talk to you, uh, and uh, it's from uh, it's from the B man himself. And he's like, okay. And uh, the security guard like turns around and says, like, kind of hands you the, um, the pretty much the gives you the access to the the comms, and you can you can talk to. Talk to him. All right. So, uh, hey, Neil. I um, the this is the uh, person that you that kind of came up to you at the at the show earlier, and uh, you you helped put me in touch with a certain someone. Uh, found them and sent them up to our uh, VIP suite. Uh, Captain Barrett uh, said that you might be able to help us out of this uh, bit of a sticky situation that we find ourselves in right now. Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, I'm trying to remember if you told him your name or not, but, uh... I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't think so, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the lost one. The lost, uh, Aslant. Yeah, so Aslan, yeah, uh, Aslan. So, Aslan. Yeah, well, lost cat, yeah. you know, it, you know, as cats do. Um, but yeah, Captain, Captain Barrett, uh, said you uh, might be able to help us out of a... Or uh, potentially help us out of a little bit of a sticky situation, and I mean, obviously, you know what's going on with the 
the whole station security be, station being in lockdown and everything. Well, um, that's the sticky situation we're looking to for some help on. Oh, so you guys are... Well, I can't be too mad you guys got rid of Gil. Um, the problem is 30Z, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's, that's one of the problems for sure. Uh, I think we probably have the... Uh, it sounds like the exit's taken care of at the moment, but... Uh, 30Z just um, is it seems to be pretty close on their tracks at the moment. That would explain the, the hubbub I just heard over the comms. Okay, well, anyone that is, well, flesh, we can kind of convince them to, to chill out a little bit. Um, once they understand the situation, they'll be good. The problem is... Well, 30Z, they're, that one's going to hunt down your, your boys as much as they can. But, uh... I don't know, maybe maybe you could potentially redirect 30Z elsewhere on the station? I don't know if you... I don't know if you can do something like that, but that would sure be helpful. And, uh, 30Z is, uh... The thing is, they, uh... Look, I, there's the whole thing. It's not a secret of of the people here, but, like, the government's been trying to take over this place for a while, and the Dolotov system was the first step. 30Z is the second one. They... We found this out pretty much by uh, one of our boys hacking in there, but, uh... 30Z is from one of the... the, like, na I'm trying to think if there's, like, a, a national or, like, a universal government, kind of like NATO or, or something like that. I'm gonna say there is. It's just like the the Pact World's uh, government. They uh, 30Z is here because they're trying to find any secrets or anything they can do. And I think Gil was their best chance. But that you took care of Gil. I think getting their hands on whatever dust is is their next big plan of trying to infiltrate more system or the more station. Well, thing so is, here's, we don't. Here's a question for yeah. you. So it sounds like 30Z is as much of a problem for you as he is for us right now. Do you know if this thing has any weaknesses? Look, the, the big thing is, if 30Z goes down, the PAC government is going to know, which is going to give them another huge leg to get in here. Ah, uh, I I'm see. Pretty so yeah, so we're trying to... It's like a, the Minotaur situation. Like, it's he's not a he. That the bag of bolts is running around, and like we're just trying to direct it so that way, like, look, we're not dirty cops, but at the same time, we understand that an AI isn't going to fully understand the complexities, uh, especially one that was built very early on. So, uh, as the Dolotov system, we've been getting by fine, but. It, Let's be honest, more, the more uh, station also runs off of government grants because of the Dolotov system. So, until we're able to break even, uh, we, we gotta play ball as much as we can, but we, we can't give, uh, otherwise this, this place for people to come to relax will come just another military outpost close to, to the, the rifts. So, I'll see what we can do if we can, uh, Distract 30Z, but from what I understand, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Well, yeah, if, even if we can just get a, uh, you know, kind of clear the road for for the rest of the team to get it out to, uh, I, it sounds like they're heading down, or working on heading down to engineering right now. So if, you know, if we can clear the roads down to uh, engineering, then that, even that would be a help. Um, you have contact with the crew? Yeah, I can talk to him. Okay. Stay here in the comms. I'm gonna see if there's a way... If I understand if they got into it buried and... Uh, I don't know if there's anybody else. Don't tell me. If they buried, so uh, probably working with a few people. Um, we, uh... Especially if it's roads, it's probably... Gonna be out the trash chute. Um, are you the pilot? Yeah, uh, that's me. Uh, little group. That's me. Uh, um, 
Are you approved to leave yet? Uh, it should be coming up pretty quick. Uh... Okay, it's probably on hold because of the situation here. Um, look, talk with the um, talk with the kid that's in the room with you. Actually, he can hear you, and he's just like, "Hey, uh, bump them up, okay? Give them uh, security leave because uh, things are gonna have to go fast once the time comes." And uh, he's like, "Okay, okay." And uh, you see him start clicking away on the computer. He's like, "He's gonna." force your pass through um, but uh, yeah if they're going out the way I think they are you're gonna have to move fast um, but uh, stay here cuz uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to relay information since uh, the Dolotov since Dolotov shut off communication so um, all right. and uh, all right. so I, I'm gonna need uh, about 10 minutes to get back to the ship when they're yeah, before worry, they're about to go. Of, yeah, no, no, no. Like, we just need... Pretty much we just need to make sure we have a way to... Make sure if there's... What's going on with them. Yep. Uh, so, and he's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll call back in a second. Uh, so, I'm going to use the... I'm also going to uh, use some remote communications to the ship to let Jade and Barrett know that I got in contact with Neil I and that I'm about to power up the ship for flight, for like get all the systems starting to power on and, and running remotely. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm at least assuming that I have some way of turning on a lot of those systems remotely too. Like I can't pilot it remotely, but I can get everything turned on and warming up. Yeah. Yeah, like you're, you're preparing. Yeah, exactly. Your, uh, it's like turning on all of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just turning everything, getting everything turned on, powering up all the uh, the nav software, everything else, uh, ready for flight. Okay. And I'm also going to let Elsie uh, and Garuda know that, uh, hey, we're working on clearing the road. Uh, 30Z is going to be the biggest problem for you. So stay out of sight of the, uh, stay out of sight of the tin can and... We're working on clearing the road. Does does O make it clear that Ilse shouldn't destroy the tin can? Well, I think we need to pause and rewind time about 15 minutes. Because now we're 30Z came in, you guys are walking to... Uh, the kitchen, I need your stealth rolls because it's depending on what happens will depend on what music I play next. So uh that's a that's a looks like a fun roll uh from <laughs> <laughs> from uh Nate's uh reaction. What you guys get for your stealth? Six. Six. One shy. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um So we so we technically pass if you take the average. <laughs> you know what? I didn't roll for Kid and Kid Emmy and Wavadava. <laughs> I'll just do I'll just do a collection roll. Oh, Lord. All right. So you guys are stealthily making your way through, going through the crowds, um, working your way through, and you guys get up to the kitchen doors. I'm gonna roll, like pretty much 30Z is like, from you can tell, hasn't spotted you yet. And uh, I need, I want, I'm gonna do a luck roll, so odds or evens. Evens. I rolled another three. Uh, <laughs> um, is pretty much uh, this excited fan maybe slightly inebriated, and by slightly I mean a whole lot. She's like she runs away. Wubba Dubba, you're my favorite. Oh my god, makes a huge um stink. Uh, the thing is the music is blaring. Let me r do a quick roll for. Um, 30Z. 
30Z does not notice anything, and you guys are able to get, like, he kind of just shovels you all into the kitchen um, as 30Z is, like, walking, like, Terminator walking around the thing, and just people are like, oh my goodness. Um, as, like, what the dub is dealing with inebriated thing. And Elsie, you're just like, you see this extremely inebriated person, and you're like, huh. Eh. Weird. Uh, Elsie wants to <laughs> punch him in like the face, way. but, but this is. <laughs> so who would act such a way? <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm oh, sorry, I, I shouldn't have taken control of your character. <laughs> um, that's that's fine. Elsie uh, Elsie just wants to punch her in the face because it's stopping them from doing what she wants to do. Yeah. So you guys and get in jealous. there. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like pretty much Wubba Dubba like kind of. Well, you guys are in the kitchen, and, like, the kitchen staff's, like, all looking at you weird, and just, like, as you kind of see, like, the way they're preparing the meat sticks, which is, like, they pretty much, like, have, like, freeze-dried, like, meat sticks, and then it's, like, it's, like, this compressor that is just, like, and, like, it comes out, like, like, kind of, you ever seen, like, the homemade noodles where it's just, like, it... They put all the dough against the the strainer, and it's like they come out. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, so it's like that, but it's just like the meat, the bone, like it's just like everything that's like coming out, and then like a knife just comes out, it's like and then like it goes into like on a tray into like this like convection oven, and. Uh, and come out like all crispy and burnt like it's just everything but the fur <laughs> that and like feathers <laughs> it's just it's the whole thing <laughs> and just like coming out through only um, the best from Wubba Dubba's yeah mm. Elsie's um, mouth starts to, to water <laughs> raw meat really just hits her uh... <laughs> so anyway you guys is my water bottle leaking um, you guys are making your way through, and, uh, you, you pause, and, and, like, you kind of, and, like, I was like, yeah, just wait a second, as, like, the meat staff's like, the meat staff? No, nah, <laughs> the, the, the meat staff is like, uh, what are you doing here? And, uh, Wubba Dubba, like, kicks open the door, just like, oh, man, that was, anyway, we, uh. We only have a certain amount of time. I think 30Z is going to make her way in here. I keep saying her. <laughs> <laughs> it's canon now. Look. She's yeah, she... she it, well, it was, wasn't even a he. It was just, like, a nondescript, like, metal shell. But it's like... Yeah. I don't know. Apparently, uh... Yeah, it's, uh... It now the robot looks like, um... It's still, like, a metal frame. Like, a, a shiny metal... It's like, uh... I forget which Terminator is, that's like the liquid metal, but it's like the liquid metal version, but it's like in a, a female form because I keep saying she, and that's what everyone keeps calling her she. Um, she's not made of liquid metal though. Um, and so like this uh, metallic, and she's, he's like, uh, what the dub is like, okay, we only probably got a couple minutes before 30Z's gonna come back here and do her, uh, her searches. So, um, and uh, he kind of goes over to like this um, pretty much service elevator, and he's like, "Okay, so here's the thing: we're only going to be able to send uh, one down at a time to get into to engineering. This is how we uh, get quick uh, quick meat delivery." So, um, and uh, Rhodes is like, "Um." I know it's. Everyone's gonna step up and go. Ilsi, kid, Emmy, me. The only thing is, no one knows you're going down, and so. Then I'm you, Ilsi, kid, me. Yeah. Let me go first, and then I can prepare the way. Um. And uh, yeah, we can we can get around there. And he's like, "Ooh, excellent." And uh, he's like, "So, uh, pretty much." Um, so, yeah, the, pretty much, uh, yeah, the, 
I mean, he gets in there, and he's like, well, here, odds or evens. I called it last time, Josh. It's your turn. Uh, evens. Oh my, no lie, I rolled another three. Oh my god. <laughs> and I switched die. <laughs> like, I've been going back and forth between the two. Uh, <laughs> um, Axe! <laughs> it's... <laughs> Next time we gotta see it when you roll it, Dave. If they're... Here, let's all go to roll 20. I'll roll a digital die right in front of you guys. <laughs> no, I wanna watch you roll a dice in your tray. A... Oh, my tray is across the room. <laughs> so... It's all good. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, he's like... I mean, he's like, yeah, no, there's no room for for the kid to fit in um so yeah cause like as we said uh she's kinda big um so anyway did you say uh, it was one at a time or two at a time one at a time yeah. the, the luck roll was cause the kid's kinda small gotcha. um that maybe that Emmy could take uh the kid down at the same time but uh that luck roll is like no there's no way two people can fit in at the same time so it's gonna have to yeah. be one one at a time so he's so emmy like makes her way down and um let's see um you know i'm gonna do do this this time since n people are having problems with me rolling three <laughs> knight i want you to roll me a d6 don't tell me the result <laughs> Because now it's going to be your fault if the luck is bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, um, Emmy goes down, and like pretty much you can see that the the elevator, the service elevator, is beginning to come back up. Um, odds or evens, guys. Odds. Right. <laughs> Four. Four. <laughs> You have to pick this time to lose faith in the evens. <laughs> Let's see, what would I would have rolled? I rolled a six. <laughs> anyway, um, so pretty much uh, you like get the kid, you get dust in there, and he's like, uh, there might be room for one more as the door burst open. Wave my mouse. And 30 Z's there. And spots you guys. Um, I'm going to say... So, uh, Ilse's already down, and the kid's just going down Bubba now? Bubba. No, Ilse isn't down. The... Um, uh, Rhodes. Rhodes went down first to make sure that and, and none of the engineers or service people would kind of get in your way. Okay. And now the kid is currently going down. Well, I'll say, like, you guys can, like, as 30Z is swinging open the door before uh, she notices you, you can slam the, the, the thing down and start sending the kid. So. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, send it. So, um, with that, I'll give you both... Um, uh, an action to whether you guys want to try to hide or try to to stall or or whatever, like Wubba Dubba like quickly looks in your eyes and just like kind of gives you like the nonverbal of like do what you gotta <laughs> as um, as he kind of like kind of gets his staff like out of the way. Oh man, I'm gonna jump to the to the fryer. Or, like, I'm looking for... So, first off, I want to find something that's got oil in it. Uh, yeah, well... So I'm looking for, like, a fryer or something. Yeah, so, you notice that underneath where all the meat sticks are being, like... So, here, let me let me p tell you how this room is set up a little bit. Um, so, pretty much, it's, like, your strain... There's, like, multiple strainers of meat. Like, there's, like, three... There's like metal, pretty much you guys are in the back corner. The doors are kind of um, like, okay, so on the north wall is where the entrance is. 
and like there's kind of just metal cabinets all around there uh on the south towards the west is where the service elevator is in between you guys is the reason why 30z wasn't able to spot you right away is that there's three machines which it's uh that are strainers cutters ovens uh and then the collectors to go out to the buffet line um and then uh which is lines up right towards the the door the 30z just came in uh in the in the west southwest corner is the is the specialty thing so you guys see like a box just that says flamingo meat and uh that is like specialty made where there there is like a fire there it looks like there's a grease trap but you also notice well uh now you can spot this pretty easily is that there's like a collection of grease uh underneath each of the the ovens okay how close to the uh um. How close to the 15 minute mark are we for for the uh, backtrack on? I'm going to say this is like, at this point, this is when you're trying to call Neolai. And like, the this is like uh, within the, the first five minutes. So this mm. is why maybe okay. you're like, Neolai doesn't, this is why Neolai isn't answering right away. Because like, 30Z like, sent out an alert or something. And uh... And just uh, all this other stuff is starting to pop off. So, um, yeah. So, like, but you don't you don't know that. But you can hear like the you can hear the yeah. I can hear their activity, but I'm I don't necessarily yeah. know. The this is the it, is it to the point where I can give them the information not to destroy or uh, harm the robot yeah, too yeah, much. Yeah, you, you don't know that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Why, I was, it, it, why I was asking. Right now, it's just destruction. Like, there's damage depending on what it is could maybe be passed off. But anyway, Gerudo, you were gonna do something. Um. Yeah, I think uh, Gerudo's gonna grab Ilsi and just drag her down. And uh, basically, we're going to try to duck down behind the machinery before uh, the bot sees us. And pretty much the idea is we're going to try to stay on the opposite side of the machinery from the robot. Yeah. So, I just realized I don't know how long a round of combat is. Uh, combat. If you guys find it before me. Yeah, I'm, I'm heading there. Yeah. The combat round. Each combat round lasts around six seconds of game time. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a lot of rounds of combat. Okay, well, <laughs> each traveler oh, yeah, just see that. a minor action and a significant action. Travelers take these actions in initiative order. Yep, starting I see with that. those okay, who so, hold the highest initiative check. All right, so um, we will never. This is we're in a weird situation. So I'm gonna say rather than every six seconds, like um, we're I'm gonna keep doing actions, and then if you guys, we'll just do what we've been doing. It's gonna like because. Uh, I don't want to do a traditional combat thing as Knight is not able to be a part of it. If everyone was here, we would kind of do it, but um, I don't. <laughs> it'd be because, uh, as we said, like we're kind of rewinding time a little bit. So, um, but anyway, uh, so you guys are doing stealth. So roll me, roll me stealth. Okay. I rolled my stealth and I rolled strength, although I can roll dex. Um, I rolled strength because I'm dragging Elsie with me. Mm -hmm. Elsie, you don't need to roll um, this, by the way. Okay. So, yeah, this so is. So I rolled an 11. Yeah, so you you pull you pull Elsie down and, like, 
30Z is like, n doesn't notice you. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, pretty much, uh, Ilse, what would you like to do? Um, well, Ilse had the smoke grenade in her hand ready to go, but now she's pulled behind these boxes with Gerudo and just, like, looks at him as if, like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so that's what she said. She says that to, to Gerudo. What are you doing? Oh, um, Gerudo's just gonna literally put his hand over her mouth and go like this with his hand. And just go. And like, she's like half muffled trying to say. Rrr. Gerudo's getting a little bit of a little bit of canines showing here as he's as he's like <sighs> Alright, so while you're doing that, uh you hear So 30Z, what are you uh doing back here? It's uh we're just uh which is the humble establishment. And, uh, 30Z just like, we heard of possible lawbreakers that we are chasing down. We are investigating and must do a thorough search. We had a ping from a stolen, uh, comm unit from this area. And thus, we are searching quite thoroughly. As like she kind of is cycling through, so um, and so like pretty much that that's like a we're gonna say like a minute past while that's all going on. Can um, we hear that conversation? Oh yeah, that's why I said it out loud. Like you, you, she's not trying to. She's in the room with us. She's in the room. You can hear it. Like she's still kind of at the entrance. Um, but uh, all right. What would you guys like to do? Would you like to? What Keep so what am I or? close to behind these boxes, Dave? So pretty much you see like uh, all the like the chicken, the the gator, the koala, the uh, the pork, like all the like refrigerated crates of of meat that you guys are hiding behind, um, and like there's even one that's like a very like small box of that says imitation seafood. In parentheses, everything uh, that is um, that whale, is, that is penguin. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's dolphin. All of them. What mm -hmm. what's my neatest uh, nearest um, like source of fire and or mechanism? Uh, would probably be the ovens um, that has fire in it. Um, if you that would be the closest thing, but that's also like real close to Wubba Dubba. Uh, he kind of has his back to the ovens right now. Um, but uh, there's also in the southwest corner, which uh, you guys are in the southeast corner. Sorry, I, I misspoke. In the southeast corner is where the flamingo and specialty meats are going, being made. In the southwest is where the um, where the service elevator is. So, like, in there you can see that there's, like, a specialty pit of, like, kind of like it's not like the con the ovens the convection ovens but it's like a actual grill so if uh you want to do something with that it's just you have to make your way across the kitchen without being spotted um so you just see a com get chucked from where we are to the grills all right um, at least give it to me because I got a lot of decks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, V said I'm seeing. There's sense. not a throw, this makes sense. but uh, I'm gonna still do a stealthy, either strength or dexterity. All right, stealth with strength. Uh, 
I am rolling great today. That's a four. So you go and like, <laughs> it's like the perfect like kind of silence. Like you're you're just like you're, you're lined up. You can you know thirty Z is not looking in the right direction. Yeah, yep. Kagi, you're back. You just throw it, and then you see that the wire that goes to the earpiece wraps around your wrist as it pulls off as most of the momentum like stops and it clatters like behind the ovens so about halfway and 30z just like like um well her face doesn't move but it's just like her head just snaps like in the sound of that direction it's just like what was that and uh um what well, the dove is just like Hey, it's a kitchen with a bunch of weird noises, you know? <coughs> and she's uh, gonna make her way to start inspecting. Uh, Alright. Is, is she starting where the noise came from? Yeah, like, she's, she still has to walk past all three of it. Like, she has to... She pretty much has to walk around the long way or the short way. Like, sorry, around all of them because it's all, like, a, a conveyor belt. And she can't, like, you can't cross through it. So she either has to walk past the flamingo thing or, and I'm going to roll for this. Um, uh, odds are going to be she goes around where the service elevator is. Even she's going to go around where the flamingo thing is. Uh, the different, I'm letting you guys know, the difference is, like, if it's the flamingo, if she goes around the flamingo end, she can, like, you guys don't have, like, any, like you're blocked from like the door, but there, she can see right into your hiding place, like because there's nothing covering you from from that way. Um, the other side is that uh, the service elevator is um, kind of cover, like she'll be covering the service elevator. All right. Well, she starts making her way towards the service elevator as uh she begins walking around there um are you just gonna hold while she she goes there or what are you gonna do yep i think gerudo's gonna grab lc's arm in just like a vice grip and it's just gonna go so with that as 30z makes her way towards the end you hear boom as the service elevator opens up and uh is there waiting for the next person and she turns around is just like starts eyeing that um so uh i will so pretty much what, what would you guys like to do? So it can only hold one person, right? If you guys want to try fitting both people in, you are able to do that. It's a... Uh, what? Like, is you guys... What's around the service elevator again? Pretty much, it's the service elevator on the on the west wall. You guys are on, behind... Um, the meat boxes that the refrigerated meat metallic crates that are in the corner um and then uh pretty much it's just like the the shoots that uh you can feed the meat into how large are the shoots they're pretty they're decent size like enough to fit like a giant slab of meat also, I'm going to say right now, as the elevator comes back up, <clears throat> this, uh, um, Gerudo, not Gerudo, Ohil, you're talking with, uh, Neolai now. Uh, you haven't got to the part where he says we can't damage 30Z, but you're, you have started your conversations and, like, you're hearing, pretty much you're, in one ear, you're hearing everything that's going on in, in Wubbadubba's and then... The other thing you have, uh, what, uh, what Neil I saying. So. Yeah, so I, I'm going to kind of be, with that, I'm going to be augmenting how I was talking to Neil I. It's like, they're, 
they're in really in the thick of it with 30Z right now. Just so he's well aware that that's the, how uh, tight they are at the moment. Yeah, so... Um... But yeah, I want uh, I want an action from or a skill rather from uh, Gerudo or for Ilsi right now for what you guys want to do. Like, if you guys want to try to fit both y'all in there, you can you can give a shot. So so this is what Ilsi wants to do, and we'll see what's doable or not. Uh, Ilsi wants to bum rush 30Z and push 30Z towards the meat shoots in the process of then like. Pushing and then like moving into so pushing 30z in towards the meat shoots, but then like trying to get themselves also into the elevator. Um, I just had an idea, but I'm having a hard time. I don't know what the climbing kit has in it. Uh, so sorry, guys, I'm just trying to see what equipment that comes with real quick. No problem. So, uh, page 119 includes a safety harness, gloves and rock shoes, belts with secure, belt with secure for tools and head protection, and provides DM plus one to climb rock surfaces. I assume you're looking for something like rope, which I don't see rope specifically mentioned. Um, yeah, more or less. I was just trying to see if it had some kind of a, a rope or cable or, or something like that. Um, but not seeing that, yeah, I think, um, I think Gerudo's going to shove Ilsi towards the, um, towards the elevator and, uh, push over a stack of boxes towards the robot. Alright, so first let's see Elsie do your roll first. Alright, so I'm trying to just do a strength roll to I guess athletics, right? This would be a strength in athletics. Yes, yes. Yeah. Strength in athletics. Yeah. So it's a zero roll, so I have to get an eight or higher. Let's see what happens. And we roll amazing that's an 11 to push the 30z towards the All right. so so yeah you shove 30z back uh and like definitely caught off balance like she's definitely heavier than you like expected cuz she kind of looks lighter but like you just catch her in the right moment or anything like when she's not paying attention and her arm actually like swings around and gets stuck into one of the meat grinders as it slowly starts to pull her in and she's just like looking at there and is just like looking back at you um so she's kind of caught and then Gerudo you said you're pushing over the boxes and or the crates and, and pulling Elsie into the I'm trying to push Elsie into the elevator so uh, so G and, pushed like, me shut the door and, and then I hit I or I hit the 30Z yeah, we can do that, and then, uh, yeah, so pretty much, yeah, you can... My main goal is to get Ilse in the elevator sent on her way. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, Ilse, uh, you're, you can, and Elsie's not gonna fight, um... Nope, that was her uh, plan, but she wants, um, she's, like, frantically, like, waving Garuda towards the elevator. Garuda's hitting the button and sending the elevator, he's... All it's right. gone. So as the arm slowly gets pulled in, Elsie, you're being sent down. Um, uh, this is when uh, Ohio, you if we get to the part of the conversation where Nia lies, like, don't destroy the robot. <laughs> so, do I know that they? Would I know that they have got this arm in the grinder at this point? You heard a no. crunch, guess, <laughs> but you don't know specifics. You just know that Ilsi <laughs> went, <laughs> as she... So, um, I'm not sure what's going on right now, but 
How much damage is too much damage? Oh no. <laughs> and like, we're gonna go. We cut back. Does okay. First off, does Gerudo hear anything about that? Uh, yeah, because like, the comms yeah, I would have my. Off. Yeah, I'd have my. I'd, uh, I know. imagine it could be turned on off, on, off and on, but like, I'd definitely be having it on right at that point, relaying stuff. Back and Heels, forth. there's something you should be telling me. Yeah, and, like, uh, he'll say this as like the arms slowly getting pulled in, just like. <laughs> uh, so your conversation. Yeah, so uh, Neil, I just told me that uh, we do not want to destroy 30Z. Uh, that's the the 30Z is this tin can that's been hunting for you guys. Uh, do not destroy 30Z. All right, uh, Gerudo's gonna start looking around for some kind of a emergency stop button or something like that on the conveyor belt on the on the meat grinder. Well, while you're looking for that. Pretty much 30Z, like, locks eyes with you, takes her free arm, grabs her shoulder, crushes it, and rips her arm free, and just looks at you. As, uh, we just hear, as we cut to, to LC, just, like, just, uh, an uncomfortably warm service elevator. And Oheel just hearing everything between all these noises. And we'll see y'all next week. Dun dun dun! Man, will will we do a proper combat? Probably not. Nope. But <laughs> <laughs> not the way everybody else is hoping. We I do proper saying, combat our way. Man. I need to start saying at the beginning of this is like we will follow the rules about seventy percent of the time correctly. But, uh, if that. But anyway, thank Listen, you. To an extent, Gerudo's happy. Mission's this much closer to getting finished. Mm -hmm. Ilse is cursing up a storm inside of this elevator. Just lie. Because she realized she left. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Last thing. Odds or evens. The smoke. Odds. No, no. Uh, I know what's. No. I know what this is. This is. This is vital. This is vital to get oh! right. Oh! Roll the two. Gerudo, you see that the meat sticks are still on the floor. The, <laughs> the this is vital. <laughs> we need the we need our snacks. The bag yeah, was of not meat thinking sticks about the meat is sticks still there. At that moment. Yeah, because you guys didn't say you gave it to to dust. No, no, we did not. So no, he had a briefcase. I've got to do everything for this for... stupid team. <laughs> Gerudo's like, I need a new team. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening. We are going into episode 9, which is the uh, the pre-ultimate. I think that's what it, it might be the second to last episode. Penultimate. penultimate. Yeah, I was like, that's not the right word. The penultimate episode? Or it might be the final episode, depending on how everything goes. But, I don't know. I'm having a blast. And thank you guys for listening. Until next time, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. See you.